Hey guys, it's Wahima. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about the face. If you're a dark-skinned woman, um, a lot of times you run away from makeup makeup because it feels like it's intense and any color you put on your face either doesn't show up or when it does show up it looks like a cartoon or like a clown. And so I kind of wanted to do some back to basics types of videos before I really get into um, or before I go further into explaining how to put apply the makeup. Um, so how I got into makeup, I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself and my journey with makeup is um, I did theater in high school and in college and every time I put makeup on I always felt like I was being super fake, I always felt like the makeup wasn't ever my correct skin tone or color, it's like I had to use like a lighter shade and even some of the, um, the black uh, makeup lines that were out when I was younger, like Fashion Fair being the biggest one, they didn't even make a color that looked good on me. I was really self-conscious, there wasn't all that much inf information or, or people out there who looked like me who, were, who was wearing makeup that I thought looked beautiful on them. I always thought it looked crazy. My journey began with obviously theater makeup and putting that on and learning about the dimension of the face and then having people teach me how to do theater makeup who would never even dealt with a black person, let alone a black person of my color. So um, it was a lot of like shenanigans in the beginning and it was a lot of me being on stage kind of looking crazy but since I'm on stage like it's okay. And then finally I just decided that I wanted to figure it out myself and I had a friend, a friend um, who I grew up with who was very very fair skin um, and she used MAC. She used MAC product all the time. She's in love with makeup. And so I would go to her house and she would put makeup on me and the truth is the reason why I know how to do my makeup now is because of my friend Dorothy. What's up Dorothy? Um, that I've known, that I knew since kindergarten. And she's super fair skin, like she's like the exact opposite of me. But you know, it was her like picking out colors for me and like telling me what to put on my face or she would do my face and I'd be like, now I hate this and then we would try something new. And so she got me into MAC and MAC was the first company that I, a uh, makeup company that I started using that I was like, oh my God, this, this is, they make my color. Like they make colors that show up on me, that when I put it on my eyelid, it doesn't just disappear. Um, and they have a large range of, of products and I'm comfortable, you know, going in. I would get my Mac from Macy's, uh, their Macy's counter. And, uh, and it was great for me. So a lot of the product that I'm gonna be showing you now is from Mac. Most of my blushes, all of my eye, most of my eyeshadows, um, I, I, almost everything is from Mac. Recently, though, with like let's say within the last year and a half, I've been on a Sephora kick, and I realize now that Sephora like has a lot of different brands, and uh, most of the time when you go in, their um, staff is really knowledgeable about what, uh, especially if their staff is in my queue, um, is really knowledgeable knowledgeable about uh, what brands work and what brands don't work. Um, I'm not as ad adventurous with the lips, so. Um, I'm more of an eyeshadow, an eye person, but the lips is kind of a weird spot for me. Like I can do reds and I can do plums, but when it comes to like those crazy pinks, I'm like, or even like nude. I'm a, ooh, I have a nude that I use from Mac that I that I like, but I'm not in love with. But it's not because it, it's just because I think nude is weird on me. Like I think that sort of nude for my hue is like a what. Um, and so, you know, I'll, I'll be when talking about those different things that I am. We'll be going through this journey together. But for those of you who don't have, I, I mean, even, like, who need for me to start from the beginning about what I mean when I say, like, you know, tear duct or under the eye waterline or even your lid. So that's something that I wanted to go into today. So I'm going to show you, give you an example, like, give you an example of what I mean by the eyelid or your eye palette. Okay, so you have your lid which your eyelid is from about right here to wherever it is that your eye, when you open your eye, it creases. Now when someone tells you to put color in your crease, usually, unless you have a large eyelid, usually you're gonna wanna put the color right above your crease. So if I'm gonna go in and you see my eye, you'll see that my, cr my actual crease is like right here. And where I place my eyeshadow, 
for the crease is a little bit higher than that. My actual lid is very, very small. And so in order to make my eye look bigger and to give my palette more of a kind of fake it is what I call it, is when I, where I fake my crease. And, um, and while you're putting it on, you may, it may seem like it's, you're overdoing it, but you're not. Like, it's, but if you look at my face and you go, oh, she looks normal, or it looks normal on her, then it'll look normal on you. So when I put makeup on my lid, I started here and I go all the way to like right up here. Now my actual lid stops here. But I just take it, I, I guess also maybe in some people it's where the bone is. It's if you can feel where that bone is um, from the eye socket, then I would say you put your makeup from here to about there. And then you put your crease color, your shadow, right in here. And then above that is where you're going to put your highlight and then you have your brow so so when I say put a color on your lid I don't mean on just this part of your lid I mean take it all the way up I would say until you get to that uh, socket sort of bone where your skull comes in and then put um, your crease color right on that bone or right above it so I mean you can play with it see what you're comfortable with what you're not comfortable with um, and as I said in my first video, it's so important to get your eyebrow shaped. Like I know that it might be seem like a waste of money, or you're scared, or I mean, I would say that if you don't want to go to the nail lady, if you don't want to have Lily do your eyebrows, then go and get it threaded, which is painful. Or go somewhere where they will shape your eyebrow. And I mean, yeah, your eyebrow. Um, and some of you may not have, you know, some of your eyebrows may stop like right here and you have to like draw in the rest or whatever, but go get them shaped. Like even if it's a, a little bit of a shape, like something, go get them shaped because that'll change your face. And I mean, it'll just open your face up dramatically. Um, I, I can actually, I'll actually take off one of my makeup, part of my makeup and you can see what that looks like. Having all that hair in your face just doesn't doesn't do you any good. And also on your lip too. If you're planning on wearing color on your lip, you've got to get your lip waxed. Or get the nair, do whatever you gotta do um, to get rid of that hair. You wanna get rid of the hair from here all the way to here. And the reason why is because when you have on like pink or red, all of a sudden it looks like you have, a, you can see, all of a sudden see the mustache. What well, in your normal life, you might not be able to see it. When you put on lip, uh, lipstick or even like uh, foundation it's like all of a sudden it's like you could see your five your little five o'clock shadow and that's from experience guys um, so I'm gonna take off the makeup on this side of my face and take off my eyebrows so that you can see what the difference is and also the trick that I use how I do my eyebrows even if you are maybe a week behind getting your eyebrows done, that trick really helps to cover up all the little straggly hairs that um, that can develop. I've I've not been able to get my eyebrows waxed for three weeks once. You normally go every two weeks, but I had to go an extra week, and I just did that trick, and it did the it did the job. I was still really self conscious about it, but it worked out. So, um, all that's gone, right? Let's see. Yeah. So, right, you can see the difference. <laughs> this side looks like I got punched in the face, and this side doesn't. But even with my eyebrow, my eyebrows aren't as thick, obviously. Um, I've, I fill it in, and they don't go down as far, right? I, I take it down just a little bit. So even if you have to do that, like even if it, if it, if it needs to be that for you, that's fine, because you can always fix it. Um, but spend the money, I mean, and maybe if you're somebody who doesn't want to go get your eyebrows waxed and you feel like it's a waste of money, spend the money to go get them shaped and then keep the shape. That's your thing. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm gonna try to, like I said, I want this to be interactive and I want you guys to tell me what you want to know. I, I actually um, 
am using these little sponges and I had a friend tell me that I lost all credibility by using these sponges, but let me explain. First of all, brushes are expensive. And like, I like, yeah, my blush brush, this brush, the crease brush, like this brush, like I need these brushes. But the brushes that you use to apply the eyeshadow, I'm kind of like, hmm, I'd rather use my hand or my finger. I'm just using my finger most of the time on one of these. But I love these because I feel like it gives, like I could just, I feel like it gives a lot of color. But that being said, so that I don't lose any more credibility, I'm going to um, go to Target and get some uh, brushes, like a brush kit she told me. I can't remember the woman's name who does them, but the bristles are synthetic, but they're good quality. So I'm gonna do that. <laughs> So that's it for now and I hope that was helpful and so that when I'm you know talking about things or I tell you to put makeup on your eyelid and put it in the crease and you'll know what I'm talking about. So okay, that's it. Thank you. Bye bye. I'm making you wait never too late.